Hi, my name is Olivia Lanes, and I'm one of the scientists and education leads working here at IBM Quantum. And today I want to welcome you to one of our labs and quantum data centers. IBM Quantum has the largest number of quantum processors available through the cloud, and this is where we house some of them, right here. So I'm going to walk you through the lab today, and I'm going to show you some of the room temperature and cryogenic equipment and all of the machinery that goes into keeping these devices and these machines cold. of equipment in this room is the dilution refrigerator, which is this big cylinder here. And this basically works as a Russian nesting doll. If you've ever seen those toys, it's basically a can and a can and a can and a can. And that works the exact same way. The outer can here is obviously at room temperature. And then there are four other cans on the inside, which get progressively colder and work to keep the thermal isolation at that stage of the fridge. The inner can, which hosts the IBM quantum processor and lives here at the very bottom, is an insanely cold temperature of about 15 millikelvin, and every other can basically is progressively warmer than that. And there are also stages of the fridge as well, where the top part is at room temperature, and then again, the bottom part, which hosts the processor and the qubits themselves, lives here at the very bottom. So how do we get signal from the very bottom out to the rest of the world? Well, we basically have cables that run to the bottom of the fridge here and then all the way back up to the top of the fridge into these room temperature amplifiers. And then those room temperature amplifiers make the signal bigger and it travels through these blue cables into our room temperature control electronics over here, which digitize the signal and turn that waveform into something that is able to be processed and understood by our computers and our laptops. Um, and one thing you'll probably notice is the sound. It's very, very loud in here because we have multiple dilution refrigerators all turned on and working at the same time. Uh, that's a compressor, that ch -ch 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 noise. Um, that's a compressor pump, which basically is pumping on these fridges at all time and keeps them at that insanely cold temperature. Um, so back here, you can also see a whole lot of more pumps and compressors that are working uh, to keep the fridge and the flow uh, of air and the cryogens static and working at all times. And if you come over here a little bit more, you can see we have a drawer of liquid nitrogen, which is the first cryogen that we use in the cryostat in order to cool it down to 15 millikelvin. The other important one is liquid helium, but you can't really see that. We keep it inside the dilution unit. But we might need to make sure that this drawer of liquid nitrogen is full at all times. We have a little scale here to make sure that we can weigh it and see how much nitrogen is left in the door and it never goes empty, because if we don't have enough nitrogen left in the door, then things start to warm up on us. And this is the control panel, which basically controls all of the valves and the turbo pumps that are working inside the fridge and outside the fridge. You can control them and turn them on or open them by basically just pressing these buttons. The blue color means these valves are open and the gray color means these ones are still closed. So you can control that. Like I said, it's just a button with the press of a, a button. And then the laptop here is also an interface for all of the cryogenic equipment in the dilution refrigerator as well. You can log on and basically press one button that says full cool down or one button that says full warm up. And then you can basically cool down your device and warm it back up in uh, two presses, two clicks on a computer. So it's really pretty simple. Um, like I said, this is more room temperature control boxes that digitize the signal. These cables carry the signal into more room temperature amplifiers that you can see here. It just makes the signal bigger so the computers can see the quantum signal above the noise floor. This is a hemp box which controls all of the cryogenic amplifiers inside the fridge that live at around 4 Kelvin. Um, these are network analyzers. Um, and these are current signals, which send current or voltage into the fridge to control some of the amplifiers or other cryogenic components inside the dilution refrigerator. One other thing I want to show you in this lab is this device over here, which is a VNA or a vector network analyzer. 
and this is a device that basically can tell us the frequency and the phase of the signal that we're sending into our qubits. And we like to use this as a first check in the lab when we're trying to see whether a new chip that we've made has all of the qubits at the right frequency or not. Um, so come with us, we're gonna go upstairs now because like I said, all of these solution refrigerators are turned on and they're all working, which means you can't really see anything interesting inside of them. But we have our model upstairs, which is turned off, and I'm gonna explain what you can actually see inside the dilution refrigerator in just a minute. So here we have our model dilution refrigerator, which is obviously not turned on at the moment, uh, because when the fridge is actually running, you can't see any of the internal parts or any of the cool things. But now that it is turned off, um, you can really see all of the different cryogenic components inside the fridge. Um, we can start with the chip down here. So this chip, this quantum computer has 16 qubits and all of these cables here on the bottom and the top basically plug into the sides of the chip, which is wire bonded to the sides of the packaging. And then these cables carry the microwave signal to the isolators and amplifiers that are also kept at this same plate here. And then those carry the microwave signal back up to room temperature. So every individual stage of the dilution refrigerator is at a different temperature, just like the cans that I was showing you in the other lab. That connects right here. That's the room temperature uh, part of the fridge, and that's the most outer shield. And then inside, on every single plate, that has its own shield, which would attach from the bottom and get screwed on here. And every single shield is held at a progressively colder temperature. Starting out here, which is the one that we saw in the lab, and you could touch, obviously, that was at room temperature, down all the way to the mixing chamber plate, which is about 15 millikelvin. And that would be that gold, shiny one that we saw in the lab as well. That is the lowest part of the fridge. And it's sort of like I saw I said in the lab, like a rushing nesting doll where every single can is just within another can. And that's to keep it basically thermally isolated from the environment. So once these cables go back up to this stage, they get carried all the way back to the top here. And one of the most common questions we get are why do all of the cables have this little loop on them? And it's basically because when you cool down the, the fridge and then you warm it up multiple times, over the, a few cycles of doing this, these cables, because of the expanding and shrinking of the metal due to the thermal temperature of the environment, um, can get very brittle and the cables can break if they don't have a little bit of give to them. This is the dilution unit, the mixing chamber itself, which is responsible for the cooling of the mixing chamber plate, which is the lowest plate of the fridge, like I said, 15 millikelvin, which is colder than outer space. And then this plate, basically has the first two um, cryo pumps that are responsible for bringing it down to a reasonable temperature before the dilution unit pumps on it and introduces more cryogens to bring it down to an even colder temperature. Um, other things to note up here, um, you'll see a lot of copper wiring. That's because copper has really good thermal properties and is really good at basically helping to keep all of the parts that should be cold, cold. Um, these parts right here are just to connect the plates to one another. Um, these uh, are for magnets. If you had any magnet that you wanted to introduce into your experiment, you would plug those in here. Um, and I think that's, that's basically it, yeah. So the important things to note are the actual cooling parts of the fridge. That's what these parts are for. And then the parts that actually carry the signal to the processor are the ones that go in the middle, straight down through here. And then the signal leaves coming out the other side. And then those cables basically are distributed to all of these amplifiers and isolators. These basically direct just the flow of traffic, the flow of signal to make sure that it goes back up the direction that we want it to and not backwards into the quantum chip where it can interfere with the qubits and cause noise. And like I said, all of these cables on the outside would carry the signal back up to room temperature and there would typically be a bunch of cables, although this is just a demonstration fridge so it doesn't have those cables, on the top of the fridge that would then take that signal and put it back into those room temperature boxes that you saw in the big rack 
next to the fridges that we looked at in the lab. Thanks for coming on the tour with us and sticking around. If you have any other questions about what you saw here on the tour, please feel free to leave it in the comments and we'll see you next time.